So uh, welcome back uh, to my YouTube channel. Uh, this is Moshix and today we're continuing with part two of my uh, band uh, analysis tutorial. Uh, if you remember, we'll go very quickly or uh, what we discussed in the previous tutorial. Uh, a dump is a printout of the address space of a program. It is basically at, the, at its core, it's a dump. Uh, a dump is a debugging tool that helps us to find uh, bugs, the way to produce a dump is to code this, at least this line, the very least this line in your JCL, uh, preferably also the sys event, I have a fuller event, um, even if you don't code any of these two, MVS will still give you an indicative dump of what happened when you program a band. This is how it looks when something uh, went wrong with your program and you dumped or abandoned. it. Um, it you will tell abnormally terminated and the band means abnormal end abnormally ended um, it will tell you which step which job which step and what was the reason for the band and today we're going to look a little bit of what the meaning of all these fields are i hope that by now you have downloaded from github my repository uh, which contains both this dump the program and the jcl that will cause this dump as well as the uh, S370 reference card with all the instructions, which we will be needing. Um, and also, um, I put up this, uh, this diagram here, which, uh, yeah, admittedly not the most beautiful diagram, but I think it is correct, which shows uh, all the main control tables we, we will see within the dump and which um, sometimes are needed to find the exact cause of the problem for the some of the more complicated uh, uh, problems in programs. For our example, we will need just a few of these tables um, to find. But I've I've seen programs where actually, you know, I I had to go from starting from the CVT table here, um, you know, finding the TCB, finding the SRB, uh, finding the DCB. <laughs> Um, etc. And it's almost like, you know, when you, when you imagine Tarzan, Tarzan in the movie was swinging from tree to tree by attaching to those ropes. And it's kind of the same thing. You start with CVT here. Um, and from there, you swing from table to table until you get to the table you want. Um, it's a fun, I, I actually like it. It's a fun exercise. Uh, we also discussed very briefly um, one more aspect, which is which is really, really central. And that is, and that, is that, you know, the nucleus, the, all these control blocks here are mapped into the address space of every single program that's executed in MVS or ZOS. Um, and usually to find those tables, you start with zero because the program save area is always, the, uh, is always at virtual address zero within the address space. From there, you can easily find uh, the CVT table from there you find the address space vector table from there you find the master control block for any given address space and from there you find the tcb for any given task running an address space obviously there's more than one task running address space the dump uh, the, the the code that actually executes the dump itself is a task within an address space um, but this is probably a little bit more information that we need to know for the purpose of this video but i just want to show you that how you swing from one table to the next until you find what you need to find. Um, so today we're going to look at uh, how to read this dump. So we said we already started last week, where we said that you know obviously in this case A points to the job um, uh, name, B points to the step that was executing, <coughs> the time and the date, the page number, what caused the dump with the illegal instruction here. And then um, we'll have immediately <coughs> uh, the right three most uh, bytes or six, six hexadecimal characters of the prior program status word that entry to a band um, in, within the virtual uh, address space provides us with the address of the next machine instructions to be executed. So this was going to be the next, if everything would have continued, this would have been the next address at this address uh, we would have found so 0A, C0, 3C, you know, this is the three most 
um, rightmost bytes. This would have been the next address to be executed because the program status words, status words always point to the next address to be executed. But they didn't get executed because, because the instruction before caused the dump. And we know that the instruction that caused the dump is four bytes long, so it would have to go four bytes from 3C, four bytes back. Um, would be 2.9, I guess. Um, yeah, 2.9, that's where we find the address um, that uh, dumped. Then furthermore, the TCB is a task control block that contains six lines of information, typically, uh, in this case a little bit more, um, relating to the task within the step which was being executed at the time of the event. Okay, so this is the task that caused um, the event. Um, and so this is, you know, first information which uh, is very useful for us and we need to keep in mind. Um, so then we, as we scroll, the, and I have a legend here again of everything that I just said, but um, I'm saying it a little bit more verbose than in this presentation. Um, then we get to the next uh, section of the of the dump, which is the active request blocks. Okay, RBS is request blocks, and um, and within that section we have several uh, important areas. So first of all, um, uh, we need to understand that the, that within the request block. Um, active request box, we're pointing to the active program status word um, which was being executed at the time um, of a bend, which here is 000. zero, zero. Um, and, and so um, this is the program request block that we're looking at here. Um, within the active request block. So every every time that an address space requires services from the from the operating system, those will be there will be a um, a program request block within the list of active request blocks. Um, so if we were running this program in real mode, because as you know in the MBS we still have the choice to run a program without virtual memory, like in real memory. Um, if we were running this without virtual memory then this will contain the next machine instruction in memory. But since we're running this in virtual memory, then this is going to be um, uh, all zeros. Uh, then we have the supervisor request block, also contains important information for the storage of dump, um, for the dump that we're looking at. Um, every uh, and a, a service, a supervisor request block is created when various requests by the supervisor control program are issued. So these are requests by the operating system itself. Um, uh, so as a pro you know within our as a programmer we can access the SF SVRB, the supervisor request block area of a storage dump to locate information pertaining to the problem file. So here we can find out which file created the problem. For example, um, the three most three bytes in register two, right, we have all the registers here. Uh, 0, 1, 2, the three most bytes, 0A, 4F, 7C, uh, contain the starting address of the data control block information. And why is that important? Because this points to the files that we're working with. So this, um, this, this unregistered to the three most bytes contain uh, the address of the um, of our data control block, and um, and so this is an example of a DCB address. Uh, likewise, if you look at the UCB, um, which we find uh, a little bit further down, let me see where I can find this. Um, yes. Um, so what I'm looking at here, okay, so um, this part here uh, in the SVRB, we have to go down a little bit, um, will point 
where is it? So, okay, so this, if you look at here, if within the uh, supervisor request block, if you look at this um, uh, register here, 0A4FE0, this will actually point us to the uh, unit control block. Um, and that's in the register number 10. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the three most bytes of register 10 will point to the UCB. And why is the unit control block so important? Um, because this will point to the device or the unit uh, on which the data set that we're working with is actually located. So with this we'll find the file, with this we'll find the device on which the file was located. Um, and of course then um, we have the load list here further down, which the load list refers to modules called by the load macro instruction. So in a program, every time you want to call another program or when an operating system wants to load the load module and execute it, it will issue the load macro and all the loads are being reflected here. Now you'll see that, you know, in this case, um, there, this is all zeros which points to some kind of problem. This shouldn't be zeros here at all. Uh, the next part of the load, so this is something to remember here. This should not be zero. And it starts to give us a little bit of a, it starts to give us a little bit of an indication of what went wrong. The next part of the dump is the contents directory entry, CDE. The contents directory entry contains one line of information for each load module um, associated with the task being executed. Now, if you look at this address here, 0AC010, we've, saw, we've seen this before. And that's the entry that we saw here, a little bit higher up, if you remember this, uh, very similar to this address. So, um, so soon after we entered the load module here at this address, we dumped. So there must be something very wrong right at the beginning of our load, load module. Um, so the first line here contains very specific information, specific information about the actual program module, the entry point address, which is this one, um, is the load module is, is where the our load module entered. Um, the rightmost three bytes, in this case 0AC010, provides a starting address in main storage of the program of concern of concern. So this is the one that we this is the program that caused the event. And we know now, if we went down all the way down to the dump and start to look around this address, very soon we'll find the hexadecimal instruction that caused all this mess. Um, this is, by the way, particularly useful because in a multi-programming environment, programs are loaded in available but different locations in main storage each time they're executed. So you could, you know, call the program again and again, and each time it will most probably be, be located in different part of the memory. So you never really know, and that's why looking at the content directory entry is so important. Um, uh, subtracting, now, one thing that we can do is if we subtract the EPA, this address, from the active program status word, where do we find this? Well, if we go up, um, we'll find this. If we subtract the EPA from this address, we get the exact location um, in relative length obviously we get the location uh, where the event occurred and that's why it's always important to look at the CDE because you just take this address put it in you know if you can do hex math this is a simple hex math here but you can put in hex calculator which by the way is always useful to have when you do MBS programming or any kind of uh, assembly programming um, you get the exact place in the ver in the address space where the error occurred this is very important. Uh, now, uh, you know that within MBS, one thing that I should mention is that there is really only relative addressing because all addressing within the address space is, is made out of a base uh, register and then the displacement within the res uh, base register. In our code, if we wanted to go up and look at our code, I have it here somewhere. Um, we saw that we're using register 12 as our base register. So meaning that, you know, the um, operating system assigns a fixed address to register 12 
and all other code is always relative. You see here from the code here is always relative to whatever whatever the operating system needs to add. And so when when the when the operating system resolves a virtual address, it will add the content of R12 to the to the relative address of the program. Um, I hope I hope you, you guys are able to follow me. Um, I really don't know how. It, it, I understand there's a little bit of a, con, a complex concept, but if you don't understand something, first of all, you can always ask me in the questions below uh, this video, but also just go back in the video and listen again carefully, and it all really makes sense in the end. Um, so, um, so we were saying that this, you know, the EPA subtracting the active program status word address from the EPA will give you the address where the event occurred. Um, and uh, so uh, that's something we need to keep in mind. Then the extent list, the Excel is called the extent list. Um, this is, the area is an extension of the content directory entry. So this all still refers there. Um, so, but we will mainly just looking at the APA when we looked at the content directory entry here. Now, here comes something that's very important, which is what data sets are we working on? If you look here, this is called the task input output table, TIOT. That's a term you will keep seeing very often in, uh, in MBS. Let's see if we can find, yeah, TIOT, okay. That's uh, an input output table. This is a table of all the files being used by an address space. And from CVT, there are several ways to get to the, C to the, to the TIOT. Uh, the best way is go from CVT through the um, address space uh, control blocks to the TCB. And from the TCB, then there's a way to get to the TIOT. Uh, but the dump, of course, does all this, does all the work for us already. Um, the, uh, the TIOT, the task input output table, contains one line, as you can see here, of information for each input and output file associated with the program module being executed. So this program module here that was executing at EPA, at this EPA address, was using, um, was using all of these uh, data sets. Um, the TIOT, or the task input output table, is usually referenced for storage dump file problems. So when there is a problem related to file files, this is where you start looking here. And within the table, they're obviously all located within offsets with each other. This, this is a linked list, as you will call it today in the Linux world. Um, and uh, it, the TIOT also contains uh, the UCB or the Unicontrol block, um, which we saw earlier uh, in register 10, um, up here, this one. So uh, TIOT will point to, the, so that we know on which uh, on which device those data sets exist. Um, so um, so once we located the UCB, then we know also where does the does those files uh, exist. And 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 here is a as an entry here, so this is the, the, the names that we see in the JCL. Um, so the pertinent the unit control block is the one in this case um, with, um, where is it? Let's check here, looking at my dump on paper. Um, yeah, so we should be able to see it from the address here, which is FE0, 4FE0, and 4FE0. Okay, you recognize this one? So this is, um, this is the last file that was produced, which obviously is because of the system itself. Um, then the operating system data, data management control box or area um, which is uh, the area that we look at here. Um, um, which is something which 
we'll look at here, which is Virtual Storage Manager. Uh, this gives us some indication of what, what was going on here um, within, uh, within the address space. Um, so um, the parts that are very important for us is the subpool queue elements. So every data area has its subpool, subpool queue element uh, number. Um, and of course, then we have the, the descriptor queue elements. And somewhere here, we should also have the free queue elements. So these are uh, buffer areas within the address space that we can go look what was happening there. But this is something we would most likely look at when there is storage allocation, like uh, get main and free main, uh, those kind of macros, which is not something that we have in our code to begin with. There is no get main and free main. If you look at here, we have no get main and free main at all. Um, so um, that is not something that we need to worry about in this dump. Uh, but however, um, what we need to look at is obviously uh, the QCB trace. Now the QCB trace um, is um, something that I will get to in a second. Uh, so anyway, as I was saying, the QCB is, is a safe area and that contains information about requests for system resources. Every time a program makes a request for a system resource, uh, there's a trace entry here. And, uh, and this is really an important part of the dump because the safe area trace information uh, is, is a program tracing aid. We can trace exactly what happened. Uh, it keeps track of, uh, of the chain of requested load modules and this can be very important when a programmer wants to determine uh, if a load module such as input output routine was being executed at the time of the event or not because you want to know if you ever got to make the request or not which is helpful by the way for our particular problem here. The register, content, the register contents in this area of the dump provide a chain so you can trace from, from a set of register, you can always, you know, um, trace back to the next one. Um, and, um, and as long as you always find the entry point address, the EPA and the return address from the registers, you always go from one to the next. Um, which is, by the way, also the way the operating system uh, <laughs> uh, switches between, uh, between various programs running. Um, so whenever you have very complex uh, situations, you know, looking at these traces is, is, uh, is a good way to find, uh, find the problems, uh, especially here in the save area information, because you have all these registers um, that point to the EPA and to the return address. So the EPA is always this register and this points to the return address. And we can see here that something is very wrong. The interrupt occurred at 0AC03C. We know that the instruction length for this register was four, so we have to go four bytes back, uh, and then we would find something. So the, and, and here we find again, you know, the register at time of error. Obviously this, um, you know, this points again um, to the start area of our of our uh, load module and here we have something very strange a bending program name so this should actually never happen and the bending program name was we you know point a bending program address 000 and now that we look at this we start to realize that we abandoned with a 0c7 because our load module was never loaded because the um, because uh, JS2 was never able to find the load module that we wanted to execute. So something's very wrong here. It compiled, but then we were not able to find the load module. And the reason for that is that um, the assembler had, if you look at it here, if you look at, um, it did assemble it, but since they were, uh, if you look at here, the assembler found some return code, and so since the return code was 8, and we decided not to uh, execute programs with more than 4 return code, and why it did compile it, uh, it could never load it because we never created a load module for it. 
and um, and so here from from by looking at the at the uh, at this dump we were able to figure out what the problem was and the illegal instruction was because there was no instruction 000 is not in, is not a valid instruction so um, we can now go down to the dump and start to look for this area uh, obviously the whole dump is here so we'll have to do it here Entry address the AC zero three six. So and oops. have to find it here okay so as you can see this is the beginning of our program and we just have a bunch of blanks here and then a bunch of zeros and executing zeros is an illegal instruction and this is why our uh, our program bombed out and abandoned so we would now have to go to the JCL and we will find out two things first of all our program refers to look at the it tries to open a file um, where's the DCB statement here yeah out DCB uh, it opens a file for writing with the DD name of out DDB out DD uh, if you look at the if you look at the, um, sorry about the noise, there's a huge storm going on here. Uh, at the JCL, there is no, no ILDD. And so uh, this program could have never worked, number one, because we compiled with some errors, and number two, uh, the ILDD JCL statement, the, D, the data definition for ILDD was missing. There should be an go dot out dd and then dd sys out um, equals whatever you want to put in there. And and by doing you know by looking at this dump we found a very trivial error. Now I'm not saying we couldn't have found this error without looking at it because there's also another huge indication right here out dd dd statement missing. And that's why our program terminated. It tried to open this and it couldn't. So um, we see that you know uh, dump contains a lot of information and um, the, you know the very minimum uh, elements of looking at a dump is uh, what I had mentioned here obviously always finding the EPA um, of the you know is kind of an important step um, and because we can we did we subtract to the EPA from the program status word at entry and that will give us an address where something wrong happened. Now, when you when you code in assembler, you can, you know, as I did here, it's always very easy just to go to the exact address and the exact instruction. Let me give you an example of an instruction here. Um, load, right? Load is 5.8. And so then you can you know exactly which instruction resulted in, in, in the error. You can go back to the source of the assembler and find the offending instruction. If you're abandoning because of a PL1 or a COBOL or Fortran program, you would have to go um, and recompile the program with the list uh, parameter so that the list generates an assembler, a pseudo assembler for every instruction in the PL1 format or COBOL, Fortran or COBOL, and then you can more or less find out which instruction um, caused the abend. 
and more often than not it's just some wrong data handling um, so um, so this is a very uh, basic introduction into uh, a bend uh, dump analysis uh, we can go much deeper we I can recreate much more difficult problems um, I think you know there is there's people who are kind of you know almost afraid of having to look at dumps and they try to avoid it and then start looking at the source code and you know never open the dump and try to find it in the source code itself for me looking at dump um, dumps and then doing the dump analysis is almost like you know feeling feeling almost like um, uh, you know Sherlock Holmes finding cues you know following up on links and doing some hex uh, arithmetic so that you know especially within the trace for instance um, in the save area in the trace save area uh, until I find what really caused it and if you spend some time and learn to read dump analysis um, you can find all the errors now this was part two where we looked at some very trivial things in part three I'm going to put in a very difficult uh, bug um, within assembler to to find and um, and then we'll do some detective work there on finding um, the offending the offending instruction or the offending part of the program they created the dump um, so uh, I encourage you again to look at this dump which is included in my github um, if you look at my github right now you will see that there is the dump itself we have the JCL that produces the dump we have the control tables that I just showed um, this one here is in there we have uh, various MBS internals manuals PDFs that will tell you how MBS works works we have a we have the um, 370 instruction reference card uh, which I think is essential especially when we start in the next um, series in the next video when we start to look at much more complicated uh, problems uh, to solve um, but again uh, if you have not downloaded this um, this um, this github repository then I would really strongly encourage you to download it and read it and look through it and at the very least run the JCL that is included in the repository so you can produce your own dump um, I know that must be a ton of questions this is not a, a simple uh, subject but um, please um, contact me at any time uh, by questions or direct emails to um, to help you, um, you know, make the most out of this tutorial thank you very much please subscribe to my video to see to get the notifications of future uh, videos that I'll be releasing and if you like this video press on the like button and see you soon thank you very much